All right, so I'm a little embarrassed to tell you this, but recently my entire team rediscovered Canva. I had heard about it, but I have a design background, so I was like, I don't need Canva. Well, it's been redone, and my whole world has been like, I've been enlightened. <laughs> I love this program. Our entire team loves this program. Everything from a design background and how we present ourselves professionally has changed, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. So if you have no idea what Canva is, Canva is basically a tool that allows you design, to design a lot of different things, really anything you want with its online web-based platform. I never thought it was necessary because I have a graphic design background and I know InDesign, and I thought people are using Canva for like presentations and little Instagram posts here and there, but this new redo that they did like sometime last year, it, it transformed my view of this program. My entire team is using this program and our efficiency is just through the roof. And Canva gives you the functionality and the tools you actually needed out of InDesign and puts it into a functional free program online that you can not only design on your laptop, I design on my phone driving to preschool pickup with Michael and Beth. Like I get so much done with this program. I can tweak and do proofreading on it from things that my team members have created. It has changed my life. So I'm gonna actually go to the computer and show you the ins and outs, the lay of the land, just kind of break down the basics of this program in case you have never explored it for yourself. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna show you all the different ways that we are utilizing Canva. Um, we are using Canva for graphics to promote certain things on Instagram that, that are branded to us. We're using it for our bridal guide template that we, it's a bridal magazine that we mail to our clients as soon as they book, um, our pricing guide, basically everything that our brand needs is in Canva. So let me show you something super basic. Let's talk about an Instagram story. Why is this important? So I just clicked an Insta story template. This is a size that you would use to make a template for Insta story. Um, and the reason why I love this is because you could just so simply create a few templates for your work as a way to more professionally showcase um, things that you're working on, things that you're shooting. Let's let's talk really quickly about the basics. So you're gonna have three different things within Canva. You're gonna have photo boxes, text boxes, and element boxes. So photo boxes are gonna look like this. Let's go to uploads and find an image. Let's say this is an image from a recent family shoot. So this is a photo box. You can use the white circles on the edges to adjust the size. You can crop in like this with the white bars here and here. Um, I'm doing Command Z to undo, just like a normal undo command that you would use for any type of uh, com computer design program. What you can do here uh, is that you can start customizing. Now, now let's talk about Canva for free and Canva Pro. You see Canva Pro up here. We have a Pro option and we love that option because it has allowed us to um, basically have a brand kit with our own fonts. So uh, if I wanted to add text here, um, so if I do add a heading, you'll notice it just added this text box, right? So whenever you see a solid magenta line, that means it's centered. But do you see right here where it says KJP? So when I hit KJP, I have different brand kits. So I have a KJP brand kit for my business currently. The Acton brand kit is for the academy we're starting for our children. Um, and then the starter course has its own kit. You can save logos to these kits, your exact hex code colors. So my exact hex code. So every time I use teal in Canva, it's my teal, my gray. You can save fonts. I mean, it's really fascinating. So let's say we're gonna use KJP. And that means I have my heading font. This is what my logo is created from, a subheading font, and then a paragraph font. So every time I'm making something and I click to add text, if I'm in my brand kit, it is automatically going to be the right font. So I don't stray away. I mean, all this stuff over here is cool, looks really awesome. That's not my brand. I don't ever want to post anything, anything looking like that that doesn't match the KJ brand. It will be, uh, it'll discredit me. Uh, it'll make me look less professional, even though it's tempting because it looks fun. Um, so let's say, you know, new family shoot. All right, so I typed that in. I'm going to increase the size, but also you can increase the size by just grabbing it like this, which is amazing. I tend to go for more of a gray than a black, so let's change the color. So these are my brand colors. See, it's right here in the brand kit section, so I'm gonna make it light gray. Uh, and let's say, you know, let's not just have one photo, let's have more than one. So I'm gonna copy and paste this, make it a little bit smaller. 
Okay, and I'm going to add another image. So I'm going to go to uploads and find some photos. Um, I love this of mom. I'm going to drag it into there. Now I don't like that it's competing right here. So I'm going to go to elements. This is another type of box. This is an element box. This is minty teal. Let's change that not to my teal, but to white. All right. So we have that here and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And now we're going to go to position. We're going to go backward. And now I have a little frame here. It's overlapping that image a little bit too much and it's a little too big. So I'm going to scale it down. Look how easy this is. It's just amazing. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add maybe their name. So new family shoot, copy and paste that. I'm going to say, let's say um, the Pulsifer family. Now let's talk about how we can edit fonts. We can make it look more high end. We're going to scale down, go up here. We can do letter spacing. It's going to spread out our letters and all of a sudden look how legit that looks. Okay. We're going to center that here. New family shoot. Make sure we're centered solid magenta line. All right. We're going to make sure this is centered and this is centered. If it's left aligned, you have a space over here. It's a little bit harder to center that. So we're going to make sure these are centered. I'm going to select both of them and there is our center line. Perfect. Okay. So new family shoot pulse for family. Now let's give people an action step when they see this on our story. So copy and pasting this again, let's say view on the blog exclamation mark. Okay. I'm actually going to go to my fonts here. I'm going to make it italicized. All right. So maybe we'll do view on the blog here. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit and then I'll put a little link on my stories underneath here. All right. So this is going to look really cool on my phone, but what else can we do? That's really awesome in Canva. Instead of exporting this as a JPEG to then post on Instagram, what I like to do, I'm going to select just the images in the box here. I'm going to go to animate and I'm going to do like pan. Could you see that? So now I'm going to export this as a, a little quick movie and I'm going to post that on stories instead of just an image because it's just going to look way more interesting and engaging. So let's go to share. And then you have all these options. You go to download MP4 video um, will allow you to have that animated movement. Now, if you want to change the duration, you come up here, it's going to be a five second clip, but you could change that. I would recommend five seconds for something like this. You could even do something a little bit shorter, like three seconds. Then you go to share and it'll be a smaller, a smaller file and a quicker story post. Okay. So when you click here, you could also export it as a JPEG, PNG, PDF, um, but you won't have the movement unless it is a video file. You can also export gifts. I mean, it is amazing. Now let's say you want to do a new shoot. It's a wedding this time. So just duplicate this new wedding. Let's do Casey plus Brian. I actually did shoot their wedding back in the day. Um, and then we're going to go to our uploads. We're going to find some wedding photos that we could use like this drag and drop. And then we're going to come here and maybe we'll do like a ring shot here. How pretty look at that. Oh my gosh. Same thing. So now it's already animated. You're going to export. Now you look really professional on your stories. Okay. So that's a simple way that you can use Canva for social media, but let's go back and let's look at something. that's a much bigger deal than just an Insta story template. Let's look at something like a bridal guide magazine. Okay. So let's say you're a wedding photographer, your clients have booked and you want to send them something in the mail or even via email. But I, I recommend sending something in the mail. If they're spending a couple thousand dollars with you, you want to wow them, win them over. You want to seem legit. So what can you do? You can get a bridal guide template and you can create a magazine with your own images. It's incredible. The response is amazing, but how do I actually make this? Well, Let's show you the power of Canva by going through some ways to use it by using this template. This is my bridal guide. It is guys. Look at this. It is 90 pages long, but I'm walking through everything from what to bring to be ready for details all the way through pre ceremony tips. Why uh, some veils fly, some don't. Then I walk through my personal explanation of the first look why it's beneficial. Honestly, 90% of our couples do first looks. And I think it's because of this section of our bridal guide. We have testimonials from grooms, daddy, daughter, first looks, the ceremony, um, 
I explain to them why they need to have an unplugged ceremony. And here's four ways that you can educate your guest about how to have an unplugged ceremony. Anyway, I go through all these things and what I'm doing here, like a sample family formal list. So it doesn't take all day long. Um, even up here, let me go up here. I'll try to do it fast. Um, up here, helping them decide on styles. This is important. So you want a more neutral, light and airy look. That's great. If you want more bold, colorful, it's going to look more like this. That's great, but make a decision. So if you want a bright and bold recipe, here's that option. And then if you want more of a romantic style, here's that option. So great tools. Um, I even give them timelines so that they build out a timeline that works for photos. So I'm never rushed. It's amazing. So let's talk through all the different ways you can customize and make tweaks to something like this. So in Canva, you have so much flexibility on how you are able to design um, the wedding experience here. This is just a standard text box. I'm going to zoom in. This is not my font. This is a font that comes free with Canva. The reason why I'm using it on this guide is because this is actually not my guide. This is the guide that I sell, the template that I sell to photographers. So my version of the guide has my font here, but this font is used because this template that over like 3000 photographers use, um, they have to use a font that is given to them in Canva for free. So this is how you know what is free in Canva and what's not. If it has a little crown beside it, those are fonts that you have to pay for Canva Pro in order to use. But if you click here, you'll notice that the Playfair display does not have a crown. It is free. So these are the two free fonts within Canva that we use within our guide so that any photographer that downloads this can just log into a free Canva account and immediately start changing things. So, all right, let's say you want to change the cover of your bridal magazine. You would go to uploads. You would go find an image that you really love. Let's see, we have uploaded so many things here recently. Um, let's say we wanted to use something like this image, okay? Drag and drop. This is important to learn because let's undo that. So Command Z. If you just click an image in Canva, it's just gonna place the image here, but that's not what we wanna do. We want to replace the image within this placeholder. So you, ha you actually have to drag the image over and drop it in. So this is great, but now we need to adjust where the title and the cover of the magazine, the text, um, what that's affecting. So I'm going to drag from the side and select here, and then I'm going to pull all of this up. Uh, whenever you see a solid magenta line, that's when you know you're dead center. So that's what I'm always looking for. Um, and whenever you struggle to get that center line, just zoom in a little bit and it's a little bit easier. All right, so let's talk about the power of Canva when it comes to, um, to use a fancy design term, um, kerning or like spacing between letters and line spacing. All right, so look at wedding here, or let's actually look at experience. You go here and, um, and you can make it look really tight little too tight. Um, or you can make it look what I think a little bit more high end by spacing it out a bit. Now that's too far, I think, but this is a good range. Um, now the other cool thing that you can do so easily, which is just a game changer is let's come here. Um, this is actually a great page for me to show you because I actually wanted to adjust some of these things. So size 11, when this is actually being viewed or printed, I think size 11 is a little too big. So I can actually hold shift and select all of these paragraph boxes and change the size with two clicks. Isn't that amazing? I can also select them, drag them down a little bit, give some breathing room here. Let's change these. So I'm selecting all of these and I'm going to make them more like size 12 and I am going to select them all again. Select, grab this little guy and it's going to move all of them down. Perfect. Now, if I want to check some spacing, I can always take this and kind of move it around and look for that solid line. There's a solid line. I want to make sure these are centered. Okay. So this is important. See how this says bridal details, but there's a space here. You want to make sure this is centered aligned because now I'm going to get a true reading on if it's centered with this image above it. So this is centered. So now I can test that. Perfect. All right. So I can actually bring these up just a little bit. That's a much better adjustment. I think that looks more appropriate size wise. All right. So let's do some adjustments up here. Let's pull this down. We can actually adjust some of the text here so it looks a little bit tighter and not spaced out. It can be hard to read if something is spaced out too much. Wedding day favorites, I think, could be on one line. So I'm going to pull it out like this and I'm going to grab from this corner so it's a little bit smaller. 
Let's make sure we get a good center line. I'm going to zoom in. There we go. And I'm going to change some of the letter spacing to be more like that. Awesome. So let's zoom out. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's give some more breathing room to those image boxes there. I'm just showing you all these little tweaks so that when you start using Canva, you know exactly how to get the adjustments that you want. When you are using Canva, I think it's important to recognize that the goal of anything you're designing is to be consistent. So with this guide, um, whether I'm at the beginning talking about engagement sessions or I'm going all the way down to the end here where I'm talking about high impact planning and how to make the most of your reception details, this font, Playfair and some of the spacing is the same that I'm using at the top of the document. And so it's consistent all the way through. The spacing is consistent all the way through. And the way that Canva is set up, it just makes consistency so easy. So the end of our bridal guide goes into explaining albums, parent albums, your online gallery. It even explains the non-professional printing woes that so many clients run into you know, when they're like, oh, I'll just print it at Walmart. I'll just print it at CVS. And then they end up with images that look like this, too dark, desaturated, oversaturated. So I explain that in my bridal guide so that my clients are more inclined um, and encouraged to actually purchase prints from me. I actually even include a code for them to purchase from me from their online gallery to get professional prints. And then this is important. I re-emphasize that they need to take special care of their 8x10s and 5x7s because they have to be cropped for a different ratio. The reason I'm showing you all this is because sometimes I think people think bridal guides are just this pretty thing, but really it saves me so much time. I don't email very much with my brides, hardly at all, because I mail this massive document to them as soon as they book with all of these different topics. There is literally so much more I could say about Canva, but honestly, everything that I just showed you is everything you need to get started and get these guides up and running for you in your business like today. So you don't need any more information, but if you do have more questions about Canva, leave them in the comments below because I love this stuff. Like this is the fun stuff for me. So if you have questions about how to use this design program that is free to you, leave them in the comment section below and we will make sure that we work that into future YouTube episodes. Um, Anyway, I will see you next week. I hope this was enjoyable, informative, and educational. Until next time, like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.